Welcome home. It's Irish family history with curious news and notes celebrating our sixth year of this podcast at the Irish Roots Cafe, where every day's a holiday and there's always room for one more. One of six broadcast series from the head school at irishroots.com. I'm Michael Laughlin, your host, publisher of rare Irish books and uh, information on every county in Ireland since 1978. Be sure to read our blog, complete with links to click on from this podcast and search our master index and books for free. Molly, wet the tea, Katie, bar the door, Sweeney, clear that floor and bring out the Irish dancers. It's time we get this show on the road. Oh, yes, here we are. We've got so much going on. I can har- hardly keep a control of the whole thing. This is show number 193 of the Irish Family History and Genealogy podcast. We've got, uh, what, five or six other Irish shows we put out, and uh, I think we're getting close to number 300 for all of them. So be sure to check them out if you've got an interest in things like uh, language and history and song and, you know, even Irish America. But among today's topics at the Irish Roots Cafe, family name of the day is Noon. Uh, the Irish County of the Month is Galway. Uh, number three is Search for Cody, Donnelly, Gil, Fillon, and Carter. Number four, Curious News, Australian Convicts Return to Cove. Number five, 99% of the National Library of Ireland's holdings are stored improperly. Number six, Curious Note, Ireland's first female Chief Justice, a seven one-minute podca- podcast Irish Family History CD. All remember to listen to all of our podcasts, and that's at irishroots.com. And we've got podcasts that are free for all, and we've got archive podcasts for a small fee. And we've got members-only podcasts. And we're even going to add some song podcasts. We're going to sing a song every week or two and put that in there. And, uh, hey, we've we've got to tell you what's happening this week. All kinds of things happening here. I hope you've got as much going on there. Number one, we did complete the first workshop of its kind in Kansas City. Uh, It was from the uh, Irish Center down at Union Station. And they completed, uh, completed the whole immersion week. Uh, weekend with Brian O'Hart. He was a teacher for Irish language and culture, and uh, he also sings in the Irish band Bua. And uh, hey, his sh- uh, Shan Nose uh, dance video that he did, uh, he did a little Shan Nose dancing for us, and uh, the video's uh, on the blog. We've got a link to that. You can take a look at that. And of course, that's just a sample of a few of the things he did. That was really a treat. It took a long time for that to happen. Number two, we're preparing for the Dublin, Ohio Irish Fest the first weekend of August. And we're also going to be doing the national launch of our Head School CD Master's Program. And that's for beginners. And let me know below uh, uh, on the blog if you want a specific book or CD on hand for you. I got a link on the blog. You can fill it in if you're looking for something. We'll be at the genealogy tent again this year, and that makes 12 years straight. Stop by, be sure to say hello, and uh, let us know you listen. Number three, Maria started up Irish song sessions at on the first Sundays of the month at the Irish Center, so be sure to do that. It's 1 o'clock to 4 o'clock every first Sunday of the month. I'll be there next month, not this month. Oh, and now here's a quick sample from our new Irish genealogy and family history CD that's out and available at irishroots.com. I thought you might want to listen to one of the tips there. Oh, welcome back. Uh, We're having a lot of fun. We're going to answer a few questions now. I've got some three by five cards everybody filled out. And uh, some people say, well, look, here's a surname map. And my name shows it's in a different county than where I'm found or where I think my family came from. Uh, Can you straighten this out for me? Well, I take it. You know, I've used several of these Irish family names maps. uh, Like we have a county cork family name map on the County Cork family history book that we print, uh, 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 Families of County Cork, Ireland. And that's from a specific time period with a specific purpose. And that shows families in County Cork before the Elizabethan confiscations. So you have to know what time period these maps cover. Now, I've also got, uh, gosh, one of the first 
probably the first major name map for Irish families is in the Annals of Ireland by the Four Masters, the Connellan translation that I reprinted several years back, and that was put together by MacDermott, and uh, that's pretty good. It's based upon the history found in the Four Masters and some of the sources they used, and it shows where these families were traditionally located. Now, these families can travel anywhere they want, and you're going to find a few people from every family probably did spread out. Uh, gosh, almost every family is probably found in, in uh, Dublin City, for that matter. Uh, but for the most part, the majority of the family stayed in a traditional county, a traditional location. Uh, so those maps sort of help you with that, but it's no detail, and it doesn't tell you that's your specific family. Uh, like there were several Murphy families that were unrelated in Ireland. So just because it shows Murphy somewhere, it doesn't mean it's your Murphy's. That's a very important thing to remember. But, hey, those family uh, name maps are very popular, and they can start a lot of people out on their search. And isn't it fun now to uh, to point out the, your, your uh, county on the map? Now, some people might just take a dart and throw it. I guess if you were a Murphy, you could do that, and you could just about be right with whatever county you hit, couldn't you? Hey, and do remember, we do a whole lot of publishing. Now we've got the CDs, we've got a DVD we put out, we've got all the books we put out. Uh, we're, it's going to surprise you, but you know what? We're the largest publisher of our kind around, I'm thinking. Uh, we got seven podcast series, and we've got over 60 books just on Irish genealogy, a book for every county in Ireland, and that just uh, sort of tips it in. I think we publish more Irish genealogy books, podcasts, and CDs in print than anyone else in the world. Uh, that's, uh, <laughs> that's big talk for a one-eyed fat man, but I'm telling you, uh, it could just be true. Hey, the book of the month, we're doing families of County Galway, Ireland, and County Galway Genealogy and Family History Notes. Uh, uh, those are two of our, our two Galway volumes from the Irish Families Project here at the Irish Roots Cafe and Head School. Uh, now, there's two of them. Now, one book is the hardbound book, and it came out first. It's one of the first seven, uh, seven volumes that are hardbound, and it's on uh, County Galway, and we got, what, 100 and some pages just on family histories from County Galway. And then, of course, we have a nice index, and we have uh, 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 other resources to help you research, and a little bit on the history of County Galway as it relates to the families. And then number two, that's the hardbound book up there. Number two is the County Galway Genealogy and Family History Notes, and that's our second book in this series on County Galway, and it has different information. Um, this is more for you know, the nitty-gritty, get-down-and-research uh, uh, any family in the world. Your name doesn't have to be in the book. This just tells you how to go about it. it introduces you to the records and resources, and it's a spiral-bound volume, and it is different from the book above, and it costs a little less, too. Uh, I've got a link to that on the blog. There's That's for both of them. And you know what? We, we cover uh, some of the t information on the 14 tribes of Galway in both of those books. And that's important because those are pretty famous tribes. You know what it says? It says the 14 ancient families or tribes of the town of Galway were those, those, families, <clears throat> those families whose ancestors were alleged to have been, in fact, by prescription arising from ancient custom, the free men or commonality of the town of Galway in the year 1484, when King Richard III granted on December 15, 1484, a new charter of incorporation to the town, giving the commonality authority to annually elect a mayor and two bailiffs and to rule the town themselves without any control or right of interference on the part of the head of the de Berg family. Powerful folks over there in Galway. Hey, uh, hey, we got coming up, scarecrows line the streets of what Irish town? And hey, humpback whales appear where only for the second time in 20 years or two decades, however you want to look at it. But now it's time to raise our eyes skyward, give thanks, and ask for help. Here are today's magnificent seven. Number one, Casey at Mullen and Casey in Paris, France. Your county's Kildare, Wicklow, and Carlo book has shipped. 
Number two, welcome new member Maureen Donnelly of Iowa City, Iowa. Searching Cody, Donnelly, Gilfillan, and Carter. Parents on both, both sides were orphans, so no one had any information. There's another one of those hard ones, folks. Number three, James Reynolds of Sunnyvale, California. Your Meath and your passenger list book have shipped. Four, John Michael Sherry of Oakville, Canada. Your County Monaghan genealogy book has shipped. Number five, Marcia Mulcahy of Cape Girardeau, Missouri. Your Irish family's great and small book has shipped. Number six, Catherine Cunningham of Alexandria, Virginia. Your County Cork genealogy and family history notes has shipped. Number seven, welcome new member Ellen McWade of Hanover, Massachusetts. Hey, remember also to check out our online search list on our webpage at irishroots.com. Uh, uh, we need to update that too. We've got a lot of new searches we've got to put in there. And that reminds me, uh, I've got to say thank you to all of our members because without you, these podcasts would not be possible uh, or the books or the CDs. And, hey, we always welcome you, whether you're a big one or a small one. We are always welcome you, and we always need you here at the cafe, you know? What would it be without you? Why, it wouldn't be at all. Ooh, and now we're coming up to the family name of the day. Well, the family name of the day is Noon, and, uh... Today's family history is in honor of gold member Richard Noon of Salem, Massachusetts, great-grandfather Bernard Noon from Galway, approximately 1880. Possible related spellings of the name? Well, you can spell Noon with an E at the end or not, or you can spell it N-O-O-N-E-N. You can change some of those vowels at the end. It can either even come from O-Noonan or Noonane. Of course, there's two different or origins there, and it's variant spelling group number 2861 in the guide to the various spellings of Irish family names. Link to that on the blog. Now, if we take a look at some notes on the name, the Reverend Patrick Wolf gives several possible origins for Noon, and the first is from Nuada, taken from an ancient sea god, and he gives it as the surname of a family of County Sligo, descended from Neil of the Nine Hostages, and they were located near the town of Sligo in the parish of Calry. And he also gives that in his day, in that area, the final N in that name was Slender. In other words, it wasn't Noon. It was more like Noon. Eh, just a little bitty in there. We learn all about those Slender and, and, slender and Wide and uh, pronunciations from R Renata in Irish class. Uh, that's they're very important in language, and we tend to, f tend to forget it day to day. Now, Wolf also gave us the name as a variant of Noonan, or O Noonan, uh, coming from O Noonan, particularly outside the province of Connaught. And John O'Donovan and his Tribes and Customs and Genealogies of the High Fiacra also cites Noonan, uh, but he says it was gone from the area of Calry in his day, at least that he knew of. Now we have one John Noon in our uh, Names of Irish Passengers to America, and his ship arrived from Belfast, which is a little north of what we would have guessed. Uh, of course, there are many more of them that came, I'm sure. Uh, and of course, counties Galway, Roscommon, and Mayo were the most numerous uh, with the name in the 19th century. So our members looking in Galway, and that's a good place to start because... Uh, that's where a lot of those noons are, and you might find some information there, even if you just put a little ad in the newspaper in County Galway. Ooh, and they've, I know they've got at least, what, two county heritage centers over there? So you got two shots there, depending on which part of Galway you think you're researching in. And those folks were real helpful, uh, at least back a few years ago. They really helped me. They, they looked like they were on the ball. If you go to Galway, you got to go to Galway Bay. And remember... Uh, one side of Galway is the County Galway. On the other side of Galway Bay is County Clare. And right there on Galway Bay is Kilfenora. And, no, not Kilfenora. Kilfenora is further down. That's an old O'Loughlin headquarters. But Ballyvon is the ancient center of power for uh, one of the O'Loughlin uh, clans. And so really, Galway Bay could have been named O'Loughlin Bay. I don't know why they overlooked that. It probably was. We've probably been lost in the mists of time. But I wouldn't want to start a rumor now. It had spread too fast, wouldn't it? Oh, 
now if we take a look at some sources, we don't find Noon in the family, uh, in the, the Irish Book of Arms. Uh, hey, but before we go any further, coming up later, we've got uh, Baltimore County Cork video. It shows Baltimore County Cork in modern times, and that's after the 1631 pillage by, uh, uh, by those bad folks that we talked about in uh, uh, last episode, the last podcast. Thought you might enjoy that. Let's take a look at the free master index online at irishroots.com. We find Noon, N-O-O-N-E, in the Birth Index of Ireland, in Irish Names and Surnames by Wolf, in Tribes, Customs, and Genealogies of the High Fiacra, in uh, Families of County Limerick, Ireland, in Families of County Galway, Ireland, and also in County Roscommon and in County Sligo Genealogy Notes, as well as in County Mayo, Ireland Genealogy and Family History Notes. And that's just the beginning. It's listed several more times online, so... You're going to be able to find some of them. And just remember, there was at least two little sets of that that we think were separate. You got to figure out which one you might have come from. Uh, hey, and remember to use that free index. It searches all of our books uh, for your family name for free. Just type it in there. Leave that O or Mac off the beginning of the name in most cases to get results. Hey, it's Around the World in Irish Ways, the webpage and videos of the month. I'm Henry VIII, I am. Is that it? Ah, number one, Peter Noon, starring with Herman Herbert, Hermits. That's a video, and that's somebody that spells the name just like our researcher. And, of course, if you're over 40, you probably heard of the Herman Hermits. Uh, number two, a Noon Family Genealogy Resources. That's a webpage from Cousin Connect. Got the link to both those on the blog. Uh, number three, Baltimore County Cork and the O'Driscoll Clan Gathering, uh, all set to a music on a video there on uh, YouTube. Got the link on the blog. Number four, Irish Humpback and Finn Wales off the Irish Coast. That's a video. Uh, you can enjoy that. Watch those big old giants just uh, frolicking on the top of the sea. Isn't that something? And, hey, we've also got our old video shorts that have been around now for a, a year or two. got to get going now that I know how to do it and make some good ones. have to present myself better. That first one, I had just woken up and stood up and said, okay, let's put this on. A guy grabbed a camera, and we did them all in one day. That was a little fast, but at least we got it done. Sometimes if you don't get it done, if you don't start and just go for it and uh, uh, do it all at one time, it never gets done. So we got it done, and now we got our the, the task ahead of us is to do it again and then just keep doing better. Any subjects you want on those videos, you let me know. We'll get it in there. And uh, gosh, what do we got now? Those are uh, those are the top four. Uh, now next we've got coming up the curious news and notes from Ireland, and maybe from a few other places. But that's everybody's favorite. Why? Mm, perhaps because it's the last segment of the podcast. And here it comes. Hey, speaking of humpback whales, which we often do, for just the second time in 20 years, humpback whale has been seen off the east coast of Ireland. Now, you, you're going to see them down in uh, the, the, the west coast, maybe, or the south off of Cork. Uh, more often but not off the east coast so i don't know if it's the weather or what maybe we can thank global warming for that it's bringing back some animal life isn't that nice number two susan denham is ireland's first chief justice she's the daughter of former irish times editor douglas gageby or gageby uh, whose father was born in belfast link on the blog for all these items number three uh, scarecrows line the streets of duro for ireland's Friendship Festival. It's a real family-friendly thing, and, uh, you know, we should see more of that over here, too. Number four, only 1% of the National Library of Ireland's holdings are stored properly. Eight million items is what they have all together, and it includes books and etchings and maps, and some of them are falling apart, and uh, they need some help, but they're starting. They're getting in on it, and I think if you go to their website, they might talk about that a little bit. Number five, Cove County Cork celebrates the return of Irish-Australian descendants. 
Or would that be some of the 26,500 Irish convicts that were sent to Australia? Hmm, it's hard to tell the good guys from the bad guys sometimes. And, uh, oh, and Cove, by the way, is spelled C-O-B-H. And, of course, in some periods in history, it was called Queenstown. And in other periods of history, it was not called Queenstown. Uh, a lot of political implications there. Number six, uh, thank goodness, goodness that the Dublin naked bike ride was shut down by the Garda. But it appears shocking that 93 folks went ahead with the feet in County Cork on a Saturday night. Well, you know, at least they did it on Saturday night. And at least it says that they were they had their bodies painted, so it, maybe it looked like they had clothes on. But uh, I tell you what, you got you got to be careful. You got to take care. Don't be falling in with the wrong crowd now. Uh, at least they stopped them in Dublin, but Cork, ah, those Corkers, you know what I mean? Hey, that just about does it. This is the end of the Hedgerow Notes today, but I just want to thank you one more time. Uh, I'm going to change some format things here real quick. Uh, your comments are appreciated, and we'll get to it. And we're going to keep uh, upgrading our uh, our books. The newest book that we've upgraded is the... Uh, uh, County Dairy, London Dairy book, uh, starting uh, August, eh, let's say August 5th. We've got a color edition coming out with a four color detailed map of County Dairy, London Dairy. Hey, there's another political thing. What do you call it? Dairy or London Dairy? That means something now. It's not just a name change, but we got that coming out. It's a detailed map from the 1800s. And uh, some of those letters are pretty small. You might have to use a magnifying glass, but Boy, there's a lot of detail, and that can sure help. And uh, that's it for today, folks. That's all for today, folks. Joseph, warm up those pipes. Remember, we have a broadcast series on Irish song and recitation, on local history of the Irish in America, and on 2,000 years of Irish history, as well as on the counties, and something special coming up on Irish language, I hope. Uh, we've got all that and more at our head school at irishroots.com. And you know, we've been known to appear, exhibit, teach, and even sing for your special events. Be sure to book in advance if it's important. And write me at my American address at Irish Roots Cafe, Box 7575, Kansas City, Missouri, 64116. Leave a message by phone at 816-256-3360. Reach me on my webpage at irishroots.com. Skype me at the Irish Roots Cafe. Uh, get me on MySpace, Facebook, Twitter, and Irish Central. Members foot the bill so they get first priority, but we're open to all. And by the way, a big thank you to all of our members. And away. <laughs>